네, 안녕하십니까. 저는 부산대학교 치과보철학교실 허중보입니다. Hello, I'm Dr. 허중보. I'm with the Busan University Prosthodontics Department. Welcome to the Master Course. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about what design elements need to be considered in designing the aesthetic implant prosthetics. The short span of time, I'm going to talk about what is emergence profile and how to form it and what is running room. Contents of today, first, natural teeth emergence profile and transition zone is referring to the running room zone, how to set the running room and uh, interdental papilla, how to maintain the form of the papilla. Lastly, pontic design. Natural tooth emergence profile. When we provide an implant treatment, what is important is to follow the natural tooth emergence profile. If you look at the top left corner, a stuck abutment is used with a zirconia crown. Compared to the right, emergence profile is not made properly and there is slight undercut. In this case, the gums support is not sufficient, so it cannot function as connective tissue, and the food can retain in that area. At the bottom, the picture is not really correct, but in the case of number 11, on the left, it didn't follow the emergence profile of natural teeth, so interdental papilla is being lost. There's a lack of tissue support, so aesthetically it is not very good. On the right, it is in harmony with the surrounding soft tissue in terms of emergence profile and the width. On the left, the emergence of profile of natural tooth from the root to CJ. It is shaped as a letter S, so that is called emergence profile. Why did God, the creator of nature, make teeth look like that? It is favorable to protect the surrounding soft tissue, and it is better to defend from outside elements. If you believe in the theory of evolution, that is how it has evolved. So it is authentically established that this appearance should be followed for implant treatment. As you can see here, we can mold or sculpt gingiva. That means we can make the appearance of gingiva looking similar to natural tooth area. So that is called molding or sculpting. And that is to form gingiva using provisional crown. As I said in the previous lecture, from the implant to the buccal bone, we need about two millimeter labial gingiva for gingival molding. So we have to have space for molding. Here you can see the word caution. You need to keep in mind that buckley, at least two millimeter thick gingiva is required for proper emergence profile. Have you seen something like this? When we mount a custom abutment, the patient says it's too painful. Sometimes patients say it's too painful when we deliver custom abutment after emergency profile is made. So you should not press it too excessively or too suddenly. Actually, we need to give time and opportunity for remodeling for the surrounding bone or gingiva. If you press it too much, it can cause pain and it will lead to swelling. So the excessive pain can feel like inflammation. So the cheeks of patient can be swollen. So as you can see here, we need to go through these about four steps 
to push it slowly. A slow pushing from the buccal side can change the soft tissue, and due to the compression from the soft tissue, uh, the surrounding bone can be remodeled and can take on appropriate shape. That's the prosthetics with a stable emergence profile, and that is very important role for the temporary. As you can see, on the left, the initial provisional contour is made. It's not very good, so proper emergence profile is not made. Therefore, slowly, we need to do gingival molding for the final prosthesis. We need a temporary for that. And now we need to determine the shape of an abutment. If emergence profile is properly made, the shape of abutment, especially when you make a custom abutment, the shape of the abutment should follow the emergence profile. That will make an ideal emergence profile. If you use stock abutments, you need to choose the one most similar to the final temporary, with the similar size as the gingival margin to form appropriate emergence profile. Now we are talking about anterior region, but what about the posterior region without a lot of connective tissue? When emergence profile is not properly formed and custom abutment and stuck abutments are tightly connected, what happens? Golden part is the cuff area, the custom abutments, subgingival portion. If it is compressed too much, it can lead to inflammation and surrounding bone tissue would be lost and it can cause pain or swelling and inflammation. So if you look at the green arrows, that should be always concave. After that, subgingival area, what we call sulcus. The starting point of the emergence profile curve is 1.5 millimeters in the gingiva, subgingiva 1.5 millimeters. The line with the green arrows can be connected to the line with the black arrows. That is the ideal emergence profile. So the final prosthesis should start 1 to 1.5 millimeters subgingiva, and it emerges to form proper shape. And from the green area to abutment, uh, smooth transition should be made. Otherwise, recession pain or inflammation can be caused. So the S-curve should be respected, and uh, that is the basic to form emergence profile. As you can see here, the natural pro emergence profile is similar to natural teeth. So if you remove temporary, it would be ideal to have such soft tissue, thick biotype, can facilitate the emergence profile like this, but if the biotype is thin, interdental papilla can be lost. I will go over that later. To keep the interdental papilla, the implanted depth, and sufficient soft tissue between implants is very important. If soft tissue is formed like this, it can work, but but the subgingiva area um, near the custom abutment, the soft tissue goes up in a straight manner. It should be in the shape of letter S. If the soft tissue is more curved, I believe the soft tissue thickness would be better, and it is called horizontal biological width. So it would help in a little bit better if the thickness of the soft tissue is a little bit thicker with S shape. So forming, sculpturing, or molding the emergence profile, there are four steps. After placing an implant, appropriate healing abutment should be selected. If a wide one is placed, and regular healing abutment should not be used for that, so appropriate healing abutment should be selected. So here you can see the healing abutment size is a bit small. 503 is used, but 603 or wide abutment should have been used. 
for better molding. Next, the provisional crown should be made. I will talk about the procedure for that later. After the fabrication, individualized impression coping, customized impression coping should be fabricated. If you have an intraoral scanner, you need to immediately scan the gingiva after the removal to fabricate a custom abutment. If you do not have the scanner, the existing temporary crown can be used and you could replicate uh, the emergence profile uh, when you take the impression. I will talk about that later. And you need to select an abutment according to the impression. And then you will be able to fabricate an ideal custom abutment with the S-curve biologic width and stably healed soft tissue. If you look at here, as I explained before, after placing an implant, when we think about the final prosthesis, the margin, the starting point of the prosthesis should be considered to select the healing abutment. Uh, this is a case of uh, four anteriors. After placing an implant, if you use 4.5 millimeter diameter implant, gingiva would be shrunk. Once the gingiva is shrunk, it is very hard to widen it later, so you need to start with 5.5 millimeter diameter implant for more aesthetic prosthesis. So once an implant is placed, a healing abutment with appropriate width needs to be connected. If gingiva is formed fitting the healing abutment, stuck abutment and the healing abutments can be mounted right into the hole. The advantage of using stuck abutment, for example, if you use the healing abutment from Austin, the curvature is the same as the stuck abutment. It is very similar, not quite the same, but very similar. They can reduce pain or discomfort of patient when final prosthesis is mounted or removed. And the final prosthesis can be fabricated with accurate curve fitting the shape. So it is very important to select a healing abutment with the same width as the final abutment. Usually, when we create an emergence profile, individualized or custom healing abutments are fabricated because the shape of the final prosthesis is different from stuck healing abutments. So healing abutments can be individualized or customized. That option is available from Austin. This is uh, the upper center incisor at the top picture. A perfectly round healing abutment is used here, which is totally different from the shape of the final maxillary anterior shape. So molding the shape would take a long time. A temporary should be used for a long time, and it should be adjusted every week to slowly open up the gingiva. It may require more than four steps. Expecting it in advance, we can trim and polish the custom abutment like the picture on the bottom left. So uh, to a certain degree, the buckle emergence profile fitting the final prosthesis is already given, which can reduce gum molding or tissue molding time. Even better, it may cost a little bit of cost and time, but customized healing abutment can be fabricated directly. The service, I believe, is also available. As you can see, the customized healing abutment is used. Buccal lingual width is already completed. Using a temporary, the final appearance can be molded, which is very time efficient. So reaching this can be done very efficiently. We need to consider patient discomfort in advance and this requires a lot of time and many visits. So customized healing abutment can be a good option for that. Customized individualized impression coping can be made. Now the molding is completed using a temporary. 
Now, as soon as the temporary is removed, the gum is shrunk. If you have an intraoral scanner, you can take the impression, but it doesn't work that way always. So what do we need to do? After removing the temporary, lab analog should be connected. After the connection of the lab analog, like the picture, the second picture, it should be submerged in silicon. The temporary crown, at the maximum contour area, the emergence profile area, should be completely submerged in silicon. And then the temporary can be removed. What happens next? If you look at the third picture, the lab analog is inside and it has a shape like this. And then an impression coping is connected and pattern resin is put in around it. And then individual impression coping is fabricated with the cervical appearance of the temporary. After taking a pickup impression, gypsum is poured in. A socket like this is made in the gypsum, leading to the final prosthesis with the same emergence profile as the temporary. Now let's talk about running room. Emergence profile is a curvature. It is the curvature of the contour starting from 1.0 to 1.5 millimeter subgingiva. Running room refers to the gingiva penetration area refers to the space from the top of the implant to the gingiva line, the total volume. So it is indicated as the blue color. So it's from the top of the implant to gingiva margin. It is important to create running room appropriately. It should not be pressed too much and it should not be without support. If you create a good running room, that can lead to excellent emergence profile. When you make an emergence profile, if you are too much focused on that and subgingiva abutment shape is not considered and running room is not considered, it will be shrunk and if you press it too hard, the emergence profile can collapse. That's why running room is important. We need to set emergence profile appropriately and proper running room needs to be set, followed by prosthesis. The space is very important. The space itself should follow the natural tooth shape or 4.5, 5 millimeter diameters are set for implants, but that is not the case for natural teeth. So abutment profile itself can imitate the natural tooth, so we need to create the running room considering that to maintain interdental papilla and the buccal soft tissue can be maintained appropriately. So aesthetic results can be achieved. This may sound difficult, but if you have a proper running room, the patient would not experience discomfort and uh, everything will fit in passively. As you can see, at the beginning, stuck abutments were used with a narrow width. So this is the representation of that. At the top pictures, the palatal extension is not sufficient. So if the running room is not good, the emergence profile of prosthesis would not be ideal. So emergence profile should be considered for the running room and the buccolingual width should be sufficient enough for beautiful emergence profile. It will lead to ease of maintenance and cleansing. And it's very important to preserve surrounding tissues. We pay a lot of attention to this in our prosthodontic department. When we make a custom abutments, Keep similar size and shape of natural teeth. Keep talking about that. Two millimeter of soft tissue on the buccal side, and if you do proper molding, gingival recession can be prevented. If it is less than two millimeters, gingival recession can occur easily on the thin biotype. Its side effects would be hard to manage. That will lead to a war with your patient, so you need to be careful. 
to prevent this from the beginning, especially for thin biotite, we need to pay attention to this quite a lot. Intentionally for this, I move palatally so that buccocide has thicker tissue. So based on proper diagnosis, so you can consider that after healing abutment is removed, it begins to shrink. When temporary is used for gingerbread molding, and the resins can be accumulated little by little to push to push out gingerbread. Now the gingerbread is pushed out. The final shape should be similar to the shape of adjacent natural tooth. And the temporary needs to be maintained so that interdental papilla can be regenerated and maintained. So that is a good option to consider. Individualized pickup impression coping is fabricated to take the impression immediately and the abutment with the same volume and curvature to the running room is fabricated and mounted. So in that way, a final prosthesis can be fabricated that can last long. Let me briefly talk about interdental papilla before I close. Interdental papilla can be maintained when the distance between the alveolar bone and the contact point of two teeth is less than five millimeters. If it is more than five, let's see what happens. According to this paper, if interdental papilla is to be maintained appropriately, the crystal bone between two teeth from the top of the crystal bone to the contact point of the two teeth, five millimeters or less, 100% of interdental papilla can be maintained. If it is six millimeters, 56%. If it is seven millimeters, 27% of interdental papilla was maintained. Similar studies were done with implants. It follows the natural teeth, so 100% of the papilla was maintained when the distance was 5 millimeters when it comes to implants. Doctors, please remember that it should be around 5 millimeters from the top of the crystal bone to the contact point. In order to do so, the contact point should be adjusted. On the left, the contact point is not very good. It will cause red inflammation around the teeth, so interdental papilla would disappear slowly. So the bottom of the contact point should be about 5 millimeters from the crystal bone to adjust the contact point. Pontic design. The best one is ovate pontic in terms of cleaning. You cannot use a dental floss if it is a saddle type, so it is very hard to clean. Next, the rich lab or the modified rich lab was designed for cleaning, but as the prosthesis covers the gum a little bit, it is not really favorable. So the ideal one is the ovate pontic because it is the most stable one. It has the convex shape for the contact surface, facilitating the cleaning and gum molding. Also, it can press by applying appropriate force. It is not a very tricky concept. If the tooth was lost long time ago, high-speed diamond burr that looks like this, round diamond burr, disinfected one can be used. So it can grind a little bit. A little bit of bleeding can occur. So in this situation, we don't wait until it is healed. Immediately, resin is added to the temporary like ovate pontic and it is pressed until the gum gets white. I don't know whether you can see the picture on the right. It should not get too white. You need to compress it slightly so that the gingival margin gets a little bit white. Step by step, until the crown form is the same as that of the adjacent teeth, Otherwise, inflammation and pain can occur. Inflammation is a headache, so you need to compress slowly, and high polishing should be done. Ovate pontic should be polished cleanly if it has 
rough surface or residual cement, it can fail. Summary of today's lecture. You already know about the emergence profile. I briefly explained it, and I also talked about running broom. These two go together. Emergence profile is not the only one you need to focus. The cuff area, the abutment in the gingiva, that area is running broom, and that needs to be properly maintained, not too much compressed or not supported. After that, you need to think about emergence profile for natural looking final prosthesis. Running room should be formed similar to that of natural teeth, and uh, it can be done using a temporary. We have talked about designing aesthetic prosthesis for anterior implants. Prognosis of anterior aesthetic prosthesis is determined by the shape of the prosthesis. I hope you understand better about the emergence profile and running room, which should be similar to natural teeth. Based on that, interdental papilla can be generated and maintained for successful anterior treatment. I'll come back with the next lecture. Thank you.